Hi friends. Today I'd like to talk about the Trinity. More specifically, I want to use Giotto's masterful 14th century fresco to clarify and elucidate particular Trinitarian truths. Why would I use a painting to do this? Well, it's important to remember that beauty has the extraordinary, even exceptional ability to articulate truth. We see this particularly on display in religious art, which teaches us a tremendous amount about the Trinity. The transcendent nature of God truly reveals itself best in beauty, in art, uh, at least in my mind. We see this in the function of art when Pope Pius XII tells us that one of the essential characteristics of art is a certain intrinsic affinity of art with religion. He goes on to say that in certain ways it renders artists interpreters of the infinite perfections of God, and particularly of the beauty and harmony of God's creation. So why did I choose this painting in particular? Well, let's take a look. Besides its inherent beauty, I chose this painting because I believe that its depiction of Christ's baptism not only beautifully tells that story, but also reveals a deeper narrative, a narrative about a relational and triune God's pursuit of us, his people. When it comes to the Trinity, I think it's important to pause here and note that we must recognize there's an inherent tension present in any discussion about a triune God. Now, this tension is not a matter of contradiction, but of incomprehensibility. At the very least, it reminds us of our own inability to fully understand something so marvelous and mysterious. The Catechism puts it this way. The Trinity is a mystery of faith in the strict sense, one of the mysteries that are hidden in God, which can never be known unless they are revealed by God. To be sure, God has left traces of his Trinitarian being in his work of creation and in his revelation throughout the Old Testament, but his inmost being as Holy Trinity is a mystery that is inaccessible to reason alone, or even to Israel's faith before the incarnation of God's Son and the sending of the Holy Spirit. This reiterates why beauty and art have such potential for communicating these truths that escape our reason alone, even though they are indeed clarified by reason when applied together, of course. So incomprehensible though it may be, the Trinity is not entirely out of reach. For as the Catechism reminds us, God makes himself known to us through the Son together with the Spirit. He has sent them to us. He has sent himself to us through the persons of the Son and the Spirit. So to help our human minds grasp the divine, it is helpful to focus on the interrelationship between the persons of the Trinity, rather than merely focusing on the Trinity's structure. To that end, let us zoom in on the dynamic way that the Trinity actually works, how the triune God actually works. Let's look back at the painting. This Trinitarian relationship is on full display in Giotto's timeless fresco, because it showcases the Trinity at work by showing Christ's baptism. Let's remember here the mediatorial formula, to the Father, through the Son, in the Holy Spirit. This reality is revealed in reverse by Giotto, who shows the Father pouring down love on us through his incarnate Son, all in the Holy Spirit. As the opening act to the Renaissance, Giotto introduces a three-dimensionality to his art. This accentuates the Trinitarian quality of his baptism in Christ. At the time, this was innovative, and he became well known for pushing the envelope in this way. It's become particularly useful, though, in communicating truths that involve symbolic yet real teaching. The Trinity is a prime example. Giotto is the artistic connecting point between the medieval emphasis on symbolism and scale and the Renaissance's celebration of exquisite realism, a synthesis that is ideal for communicating these mysteries of the faith. In the painting, as in life, Christ bridges the gap between the divine and the human, both in his very nature and in his placement in between the crowded banks. The latter illuminates the former. The Trinitarian movement focuses on the Father sending the Holy Spirit and the Son down to earth, down to us. We see that the grace of the Father's gift pours out upon the world, both through the Spirit and the Son, everywhere at once, yet temporally incarnate. Another beautiful mystery. The piece bears a mystical quality that helps ground the viewer in the incomprehensible and the divine, all while retaining enough detail to be realistic. Because truly, 
This is both a divine and transcendent truth, and it is also a historical reality. Both are true at once. And through this artwork, through this artistic style, we can see how that can be. On one side, we see the ever watchful angels serving here as another symbol of the supernatural. And on the other side of the bank are John and company representing the world. Now, traditionally, these pieces would be read from light, left to right. That is to say, these frescoes would be lined up on a wall and tell a story in summation, and that story would be read from left to right. So it's important here to note that Christ's movement is toward John. It's toward us. The artwork here succeeds in large part due to the way that it mirrors the Trinity itself. For the beautiful depiction is at once symbolic and realistic, and Giotto's historical context and an artistic style, being at the end of the medieval and start of the Renaissance periods, ideally position him to express the beautiful mysteries of the Trinity through paint.